Welcome back. So today we're making the smaller spacer for the generator project. It's actually a follow-up of the um, testing the limits, making a giant spacer. If you haven't seen that, watch it. We're making the bigger part for that. What we're going to do is we face it, we uh, turn the OD, and then we turn a recess. I need to check the dimensions. I think it's 242 or something like that. Uh, two and a half millimeter deep. Then we scribe some holes or scribe some bolt circles and divide some holes. Um, we'll show how to divide the holes uh, without the um, dividing table. I could do this small one on my dividing table, but uh, Apparently there was some interest in how to divide without a table, so we're going to do it. Yeah, it's a bit of a strange mix of uh, holes for bolts and dowel pins, so we need to drill different sizes. And they, some of them are not even equally spaced, so we'll get it done somehow. Anyway, uh, we'll dart it in, and it's laser cut, so it's about one tenth of a millimeter, which is fine. The outer diameter is a bit weird because there is a step here. Don't know if that's visible. My file is a bit equal, but you can see it's ramping up to that stage and then it falls down. So I'll dial it as best as I can. Yeah, first we do the OD, then we just skim the face off to make it flat. Uh, we only need it about to about here. The rest doesn't really matter. And then we turn it around and just skim it flat. That's all we need. Um, the ID, I may touch it or not. I don't know. We'll see. So almost done now. One more pass. And uh, I think we're done. So. I think that's our final here. Reduce the feed rate a little bit. It's cutting off, cutting around now. So it's about three and a millimeter in diameter. We just lift up this way. All right, so let's skim it and uh, do the features. So that's our final skim pass here. Uh, it's shiny almost over. It's shiny pretty much everywhere, so we'll leave it like that because we don't want to take a lot off. We don't have a lot left actually, so. Just make it flat so we can turn it around, indicate it, and flatten it on the other side. It's uh, it's mild steel plate, and it's never going to be flat, so that's the reason why we make it a bit flatter. And then we turn the features. So we marked it. Our diameter is 241 and a bit, 241.5 or so, and. Uh, it's going to be 2.6 millimeters deep. That's all we have available here. So we turn that step here and then we turn the bolt, oh, then we scribe the bolt circles uh, 222 and 270. Let's do that. So that's our final pass We're using a HSS boring bar to get into the corner. And uh, finish looks good. We are 241.3, which is good, so we got a bit of clearance. Let's finish that and uh, then we do the bolt circles. And then we turn the, the back side flat. We need to watch that here. So we're done on this side. We scrapped our 270 and 222 circle. We'll double check that before we actually drill the holes or mark the holes. Make sure 
they are good. There is a bit of leeway here, but this is gonna be super exact because we have double pins and it's gotta be on the right circle, otherwise they don't fit. It's 10 millimeter dowels and uh, yeah, we ne need to make them fit somehow. Uh, yeah. We'll turn it around, just plane the other side, just make sure it's flat. And I uh, don't know if I do have something on the inside. We'll see. Because the only, so that's gonna be, this end is gonna be on the flywheel, and this is where the, where the flex plate goes. And this is just for bolts, so there doesn't need to be super accurate surface. We got it flat. All right, it's late. Carry on tomorrow. So we're just finishing off the other side, and uh, looks about right. I didn't bother for the outside diameter here. It's just uh, as long as we got this surface flat, we're fine. And then we'll divide the hole. So let's finish that. Well, we had to do another pass because uh, there are some voids at the outer, outer diameter. Got a few harmonics here, but I think the incident is, is on its way out because of the mill scale. That kills the insert. But uh, looking good so far. We'll see. Just took another 10 or so. Let's finish that. So we decided to go for a good old HSS tool for the last pass. It didn't clean up very well. I still have some voids on the outer diameter. So, uh, this is a little bit of a better surface finish on the fine cuts because I don't want to take deep cuts here. All right, let's finish that off and see how it, how it looks. And see how it looks. So, we're done. No voids anymore. Um, we jump for it or break the edge a little bit. Um, I might do the inside diameter or might not. I don't, I don't know. The, the cut looks good. So we leave it alone because there is no reason for. There is a bit of a. You can see where the cut started here. But yeah, it's on the inner diameter. More importantly, the outer diameter is good because that's. There's more. The further outside the mass is, the more it actually contributes to any imbalance. But it's only running at 1500 RPM, so not a big issue. Anyway, let's take it off and uh, do the dividing work. So we're just double checking our diameter and it's uh, 270, that fits. What we're now going to do, we have six holes, one, two, three, four, five, six, equally spaced for through hole bolts and the the one with the cross are the double pins the three here and one here these two are missing I think I drilled the holes anyway uh, just for balance reasons so we make basically 12 holes um, 10 millimeters diameter because the bolts are made and with 10 millimeters, we got enough clearance, so we don't need to worry about what's a dowel pin and what's a through hole. Uh, should be okay. We could drill those smaller. Oh, maybe we do it. Maybe we do them nine. That gives half a millimeter clearance. Let's do it this way. All right. Uh, yeah, we check the outer. The inner is easy. That's. Uh, The inner is 8 holes on a 222 bolt circle, which is that one. And that's just 8 holes. Uh, they are threaded M8. That's one of the reasons why I didn't want to take a lot of material off, because we need to make an M8 thread, which goes into it. So, let's start with that. So, to divide those... Um, we need to figure out what distance is. We do, uh, we do one set and then another set, just to reduce the amount of error we may have. 
distance at a 60 degree uh, spacing, the distance between the bolt holes is exactly the radius. As simple as that. And if the mats are right and you're indicating or your describing is correct, you end up at the same point, and that's the that's the sanity check. So we've done the outer diameter. Uh, when you're done, just make sure, just double check them all. Um, just be careful if you check with the caliper. Uh, the angle of the uh, of the jaws here might give you a false reading. If you look here, you can see it's sliding to one corner, and that gives you a false distance here. Uh, you got to be careful. Ideally, use a pair of dividers. The problem is the the angle is not ideal, so that gives you eventually a false reading as well. Uh, what I normally do, I scribe it round, and if I end up at the same place, I use a automatic center punch and just lightly punch it, and then I go in with just with a with a with the tip of the just with the tip of the jaw, or with a divider if I have one, but this is not a good one here. I don't have a bigger one. Uh, and double check it again. And then you punch it, double check it again, because sometimes you slip when you punch. So what I did, I made those. These are the bolt holes. And with those are a bit more confident um, because I checked them between those and also from here to here, from here and from here, to have them in the middle. I think it's alright, we'll see. So we, let's do the inner circle and uh, that's going to be 8 holes I think. Yeah, that's 8 holes on the set, on, in, in, in the middle. So let's do those and then we'll drill it. So we're done. Uh, what I normally do, I check it from both sides. So walk this way to the opposite one, walk this way to the opposite one and if you end up in the same place you'll see I've got a millimeter about so I reset my calipers and I also checked it with a divider but the, they are not really sharp I need some better ones um, yeah the, the smaller one would be normally a job for the dividing table but if you don't have one do it this way. Um, it's really a simple start. You don't really need any math. If you divide your eight holes and just guess and then just try it until you end up at the same point. The best practice is actually make a, make a start point. That's what I'm doing here. Make, a st make yourself a start point and then just walk both ways and see how much area you got. And uh, Divide that by the number of steps you did, and at some point you'll end up in the same place, and that's that's exactly the spacing you need. The problem is sometimes if you if you scribe a line here, you're not depends on where your whatever you use. If you use a divider, it may not be exactly in the middle, you know, uh, because a tiny little error makes a big difference on 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 a lot of holes. So yeah, it's uh, pretty simple actually. I might do it on a piece of paper in the quiet again. So as promised, we're gonna explain that a bit uh, more in detail. So we got six holes. That's our circle. That's our center. That's our radius. We got six holes, and we want to divide them equally spaced. So that's sixty degrees. Uh, the distance from here to here is what we need. We start here and then we just indicate 1, 1, 1 and then we are on this side and then we do it the other way around and check if we're ending at, at the same point. So to figure out this distance here, you think, okay, takes the take the circumference divided by a 6 and you're there and you end up with uh, well, 7 holes because this is an arc and what you're measuring is a straight line. So we need a different method. You think, okay, take the sine of 60 degrees 
and you end up with seven holes as well because the sign only works on right angles and this is not a right angle that's a that's a triangle with uh, equal sides so what you do you take half of the angle half of that angle and that's 30 degrees take the sign which is 0 0.5 uh, so 135 or what it was times 0 0.5 times 2 so we end up with 135 here 35 spacing so if you, if you do 30 degrees, it's um, 15 degrees, sine of 15 degrees, I don't know what it is, times the radius, times 2, and you've got your spacing as well. Uh, obviously, it's not, ha it's not half of that, it's something else, because the other hole will be here, so it's a little bit more. Yeah, it's, uh, it's simple, really. Obviously, dividing table is easier, but if you don't have one, or if it's a big piece, that's how you do it. Hope that makes sense. Any questions, let me know. Let's fill the holes and tap those M8 here. So the, the one with the circles, they are 9 millimeters. The one without the circles are 10 millimeters. And these are uh, 6.5 millimeters for M8 taps, or for M8. And these are 6.5 millimeters for M8 threads. All right. So pretty much the same setup as for the big one. We have already started drilling some holes. Uh, yeah, we the one with the circle the nine, the one without our uh, nine point nine uh, because we ream it um, to have a ten millimeter press fit or ten millimeter fit for the dial pins. Hopefully it fits. We'll see. If not, we'll work something out. I don't know how exactly the holes are drilled in the flywheel. We'll find out. Uh, yeah, it's a bit laborious because there's a lot of holes. All right, let's drill that and uh, we'll come back. So we're done. We drilled all the holes. We need to ream those to 10 millimeters. They are 9.9. .9. Tap the holes here, M8. And then we can test fit it. But we're not going to do that today. It's late. Um, dinner time. We'll leave that for tomorrow. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time.